Hi, I am Dr. Avantika Tripathi, Orlin Maxillofacial Surgeon, Course Mentor Dentium. Today, I will be demonstrating the step-by-step -step process of taking an impression using the open tray impression technique for a dentium superline implant on a dummy model. This method ensures accuracy in capturing the implant position, which is essential for a precise and well-fitting prosthesis. So, let's get started. Open tray impression copings are available in different diameters and lengths. Select an open tray impression coping from the catalog of appropriate dimensions. We have an option of short that is 17 mm and long that is 21 mm coping lengths. Short coping is mainly used in posterior areas or in patients with reduced mouth opening. Long impression coping is mainly used in anterior areas or in areas where implant is placed deep inside the bowl. Impression coping has to be of length which will emerge from the side of the adjacent teeth. The impression copings are available in different emergence profile diameters. These diameters are designed to match the profile diameters of healing about milk. So the diameter should be chosen according to the cervical diameter of the tooth to be replaced. So in anterior region, narrow diameter impression coping is used and in the posterior region, a wide impression coping is preferred. There are two types of interfaces present in an impression coping, hex and non-hex. Hex interface is mainly used in single implant prosthetics, whereas non-hex or non-engaging interfaces are mainly preferred where the implants are connected with each other, such as bridges or full large prosthetics. Let's start the process of taking an impression in this dummy model. I have already placed an implant in the 4-5 region of 4 mm diameter and 10 mm length. I will be placing a hex impression coping of 5.5 diameter and short length for this case. Let's open the dentium prosthetic kit and look into its instrument required for the process. These are the handheld hex drivers available in two lengths, short and long. This is the slot driver which is used to remove a tightly seated healing abutment with the help of this torque ratchet. This is a torque ratchet driven hex driver which is placed inside this torque ratchet. In the patient, inspect the healing abutment carefully and make sure any food debris is removed from the hex slot. Once the food debris is completely removed from the healing abutment, the hex driver is seated over the healing abutment and is removed in an anti-clockwise direction. The hex driver will provide a friction fit interface which will prevent slippage of the healing abutment while tightening or removing into the patient's mouth. If the component is slipping, it can be due to the debris in the slot or the component is old and worn out. In some situations, it is difficult to unscrew the healing abutment by hand. In those cases, torque ratchet and a torque ratchet driven hex driver is used. The torque ratchet is adjusted by orienting the arrow facing away from the torque. Insert the driver into the healing abutment. One hand is used to stabilize the wrench and the other hand is used to rotate. Unscrew the healing abutment once you feel it has begun to rotate and unscrew the rest with the help of hand driver. In some cases, the hex slot of the healing abutment is destroyed or is worn out. Then the hex driver is not properly sitting inside. In those cases, we can use the slot driver. That slot driver is fitted inside the torque ratchet and it is seated inside the slot of the healing abutment and is rotated in the anti-clockwise direction to remove the healing abutment. So this process is used to remove a tightly seated healing abutment in cases where the slot of the healing abutment is worn out. All the healing abutments are manufactured with a slot for this purpose. Now see the selected impression coping inside the implant and twist it slightly so that the hex of the impression coping is properly seated inside the hex of the implant and after that the screw of the impression coping is screwed 
over it with the help of the hex drive. When in doubt, we should always take an X-ray to confirm whether the impression coping is properly seated inside the implant or not. If you notice that after several turns, the coping is still loose, then we will remove the screw and we will slightly twist the impression coping inside the implant so that the hex of the impression coping is properly seated over the hex of the implant and then we will tighten the screw over the impression coping with the help of the hex driver. The recommended torque value for tightening the impression coping is 5 to 10 Newton centimeter that can be achieved by hand tightening. Let's start taking the impression. We can use either a stock tray or a custom tray modified according to the case. Today I am using a stock tray in which I will prepare a hole which will allow my coping to protrude from the tray. Check whether the impression coping is protruding from the tray or not for the easy removal of the screw while the impression tray is seated inside the patient's mouth. Verify that the tray fits properly without interfering with the coping. So let's start taking the impression. First of all, I will start putting the light body around the impression coping. Now we will load the heavy body into the impression tray. So now we will seat the impression tray over the model. Make sure the screw hole is nicely visible. We will apply uniform pressure over the tray. Once the material is set, we will check if there is any set material inside the screw, we will remove it with the probe or explorer. Now I will insert my hex driver inside the screw and I will unscrew the screw and I will remove it very very gently. Now we will remove the impression. Inspect the impression to confirm the complete capture of implant position and surrounding soft tissues. After this we have to fix the lab analog over the impression coping by slightly twisting the lab analog so that the hex of the analog engages with the hex of the impression coping. Then I will put the screw from the back and I will tighten the screw with the hex driver. Gingival mask can be prepared either chair side or in the lab, whichever is convenient for the implantologist. It should cover 2 mm of the implant analog surface while preparing. Finally, disinfect the impression following standard infection protocols and send it to the lab with the lab prescription with some details such as shade selection. And that's it. By following these protocols, we will ensure a precise and successful impression using dendium superline implants by a open tray impression technique. If you like the content of this video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.